Check me, check me, check me. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it.
Dear oh God, oh God, oh God, this is the end of
Oh, great. Now what?
paid over 499 What a friend we have in Jesus. 
would like to hear your response. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. Yeah. All right, that's wonderful. I know that I'm talking to you there and we can respond to each other. Despite the condition that exists at this moment. I would like to say here on behalf of the pastor, the elders and members, we do welcome you to this Thanksgiving service here this afternoon. I would like to say a special welcome to any of our pastors in the congregation, elders, pastors from other congregations, other distinguished guests, those of you who have been well from uh, um, the government side, officers from the police department, and to you everyone, we say welcome. It is not a nice occasion at this moment, but thanks to God, you and I have the bread of life, so we can come to today at this time to celebrate the life of the late um, of our dear sister. We hope and trust that as we continue this afternoon's program, that you will be encouraged, you will be strengthened, and that you will not sorrow as others who have no hope. But by God's grace, we will all be comforted and strengthened by what we represented here this afternoon. So we say welcome to all. Welcome to all in Jesus' wonderful name. And so at this juncture, I would like to extend condolences on behalf of this church here at Paradise. The elders, pastors, and members of this congregation, we do express our deepest condolences. And may God bless you in this time of bereavement. We stand with me as we take a portion of the prayer. As we begin. Children, their God, 
Every one of them, Lord, we know them by name, but you know them by name and by nature. We see them when we meet with them. But at moments when they are in their silent times all by themselves and grief sets in, even then, Lord, you know them and you are with them. So God, today, we pray in a special way that you would grant them strength to face the moments ahead, comfort during this time of grief, strength to face the days and the years that will come. But Father God, I pray above all that every one of us seated here today, let this be a reminder that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. We are not guaranteed next year all we have is today. So God help us even through this funeral service to be reminded of the fact that if there is ever a time that we need to make right choices, to live right to do right, it is now. I know God, we pray for that day that all of us would look forward to. Let us look forward to it with anticipation and hope that one of these days there shall be no more caskets. No more death. No more death, there God. No more funeral trains. For we shall be home at last. Keep us there, God. Steer us in the right direction so that we might inherit that reality. In Jesus' name we pray.
present in the afternoon? Don't do it. Don't do it. You're ready. You're coming. You're coming. You're coming. You're coming. You're coming. You're coming. Of the service. And uh, those of you who have to do tributes, I want you to listen attentively uh, because we want to, we want it to flow very smoothly. Right? So I'll call first names. My brother. Um, your cousin of ours, my brother is good day, to do a tribute. He will be followed, he will be followed by a musical selection for Mr. Fire and Talia. So please stand back. So 
all whatever conditions may arise. To all our families, may God give us the strength, the hope, and the faith to go through this great ordeal. My cousin, rest in peace. God bless you. Thank you.
when and then um, she will fall like the day. Rushed to the hospital. 
It was the middle of the night and Uncle Weep would be the one driving, so he needed someone to keep me company, give my information to the doctor, and so on. Uncle called her and she was more than willing. She readily agreed. At the time, she had Jordan and brought him along. I will always remember that being the most relaxed I've ever felt at the hospital because she was there with me and of course a cute baby to play with until he started pulling things down. Kenda, I'm sorry I did not give you your flowers when you were alive. I'm sorry that I did not say thank you for being a part of my childhood, for contributing to who I am today. Thank you for leaving an indelible mark on this earth, inclusive of your five children, Perry, Ronaldo, Jordan, Kenya, and Karina. I know for a fact that your family will ensure they remember you and make you proud. Rest in perfect peace, Kenya. Just have a short poem. In the gentle force of time's embrace, our cherished mama finds a peaceful space. A presence, a consolation in our night, guiding with love, a soft guiding light. With a heart full of kindness and eyes so wide, she painted our world with joyous skies. In the chapters of family, the stories unfolds, a tapestry of love that forever holds. Her laughter like echoes in the breeze, her warmth, a comfort that never ceases. A fading twilight, a setting sun, for in memories her journeys begun. Though she slipped beyond the veil, the love she saw will never pale, especially for her kids. Our mama dear, now a star in the night, her spirit lives on a radiant sight. In the quiet corners of our hearts, when love eternally imparts, we find solace in the legacy she casts, our mama cherish forever in the past. So here's a tribute, a heartfelt token, for a whole, a soul departed but never broken. In the tapestry of kingship, you'll forever be a beloved man, a sweet man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jada. This time I want to welcome our commission of police, Mr. Don McKenzie, our uh, dear pastor. Is that she 
died in the Lord. So you may not see me, really, because this is my consolation. I even forgot my hand to go. Mama, remember she had us, Mama. And she. Mama, she had us, I used to like Mama. Yes. Oh, God, Mama, don't you leave me, oh, God. Oh, God. Yes. Why are you going to do, Mama? Why are you going to do? You want to go? Oh, God, Mama, be the middle of the tree of us. All right, so. May her soul rest in peace. Mama, no, you're here. But I know that we will meet again. Mama, she had us. On that great, great little morning. So at this time we will Mama. now listen to the eulogy. Right, you now listen to the eulogy. Right, it will be done. My father comes clean and sure I double it. Okay.
Sabrina Templeman, also known as Fire, Matheron, Romel Bailey, Hensley Elcock, Skerden, among others. Many folks may recall Mama as being the proud type when she lived in South St. George. Whenever she met country people in that area, she would be proud and loud about where she was from and who her relatives were. Everyone knew about her sister Kinder without even seeing her. About her siblings on her father's side, especially her brother Limbo, who, whom she adored and always spoke of. And even without knowing them, you'd feel you've known them forever. Oh, 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 oh. How can I forget her little Polish sister that the whole of Montu and the police at South St. George Police Station knew about. Earlier we spoke about our sister's go-getter mentality that we all inherited from our grandmother, Mary Douglas. Sweet Peas performed all jobs to ensure survival and even hustled when the opportunity came about. Whenever Sweet Peas came up to the country, while she was still living in town, there were some friends she was sure to visit. Rashida Albert that we saw just now in the pink, Deceased Tone Tone Cornwall, Pato, Velda and Coco Massive, Sammy and Sugar Hill Massive. She was also big on her La Poetry family and would not dare go back down to town without looking for her father Charlie, her cousins Den Den, Raquel, Cabell, and others. Our sister was such a colorful, carefree person. She felt the need for a name change and unofficially called herself Painter. Sweet Pea was a true character. In fact, in our frequent reminiscing on her life, we laughed more than we'd imagined by the memories we shared. We have videos, pictures, voice notes, text messages, and all the unforgettable experiences of our beloved sister that we will never delete nor archive. One of those memories was the comedic way in which she brought across her experiences or the jokes she shared about her siblings especially. She liked to joke about us. Kinder recalls that sometime this year, Mama told her, because her and Perry had babies this year, Mama told her, Kinder, you know them big, big sheep people just open out and spread out on clothesline? Kinder said yes. So this then said, girl, as I enter the clinic this morning, I see a big bed, bed sheet spread on the bench in the clinic. It wasn't an actual sheet. She was referring to our sister, Carrie. <laughs> there are endless memories of our sweetest feet. Another memory King Mary calls is that from time to time, when she visits Kinder at her home in the Coco, whenever Kinder looks down or depressed or too worried about something, she would be like, um, Kinder, Kinder, I tell you, people does not stay in a relationship long, sorry, do you know what's wrong with that man? <laughs> and Kinder would say, Mama, nothing is wrong with me, nothing is wrong with me, I'm good. There are endless memories of our sweetest speech, some of which we will continue to share so that her children will have only beautiful memories of their mom. Later in, her, later in her sister's life, after she had a daughter, Kenya Kelly, she decided to return home to paradise. She called me one day and said, I do not want my child to go in this environment, meaning in Monty. I want to move back home, so can you organize your ride for me, please? That was one of the happiest moments of my life. In fact, it was during that period that the conflict between over whose mommy she was actually was settled because her first son, that's my nephew Harry, he grew up with us at home and he grew with the perception that mommy was his mother and not his grandmother and that his brother Ronaldo wasn't really his brother. So all of that was settled during that time when she came back home. So it means was a friend based among her siblings. And so, during the year 2020, when our sister returned to paradise, she rekindled old friendships and created new ones, some of whom even became friends with her siblings. 
She was also very possessive of her family. So, Auntie Benzo was the best auntie until she couldn't have her own way. Or, Kishana was the best niece when she wanted a nice outfit or pretty hairstyle from her. Was my sister perfect? No. Are any of us perfect? I'm guessing the answer is the same. Hence, we choose to celebrate and remember only the beautiful moments of her life as she too would want us to celebrate. As we reflect upon the, be the beautiful, unique life of Kendra, I cannot help but just imagine her reaction to all of this. Our sister was not afraid of dying, but her concern was about her daughter Kenya Haley, as she is still very small and would need her mommy. She kept asking her, our sister Kinder, what about Kaylee should the unfortunate happen? Kinder gave her the assurance that Kaylee would be fine. And if it was possible, like their sister that should hear me now, I'd say to you, Kaylee and all of our other siblings are surrounded by a community of love and provision of their daily needs. They are surrounded by friends and loved ones who will ensure your legacy and beautiful memories live on in their hearts. If it was also possible that our sister Kenda could hear this in Virginia here today, we all know what her reaction will be, especially myself and my sisters and my niece, because my niece became like a sister to us as well.
and we are asking the chorister to stand by with your uh, deep to it. There will be no that valley when Jesus comes as we get ready to close the castle. So this will be the final viewing and at the end of that song we will close the casket. So families, friends, if you have not got the chance to view us yet, this will be your final opportunity to view the deceased as we get ready to close the casket. Family, family only. Sorry, family only. Family only.
a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. The good is the reading of God's word. Amen. Allow me to take this opportunity to welcome each of you again to this afternoon celebration of life. It's not in the best circumstance that we meet. And so we continue to ask of your prayer for the family. This afternoon, I'd like to take special note of the presence of the parliamentary representative of St. Andrew, Honorable Delma Thomas, and also the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Don McKenzie, Officer Don McKenzie. Thank you, and we're happy to have you here showing your support to the family. This afternoon, God has appointed a man to bring a word in such a time as this. He goes by the name of Pastor Charles Gittens. Charles Gittens is a pastor in the Greenwood Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And this afternoon, God has entrusted on his heart a message to share with God's people at this appointed time. And so as we await God's word to God's people, I invite Brother Gregory and Maya McLean as they render a special song, special musical selection, and following that musical selection, Pastor Gittin to present.
thanks a lot for that item of special music. And I was wondering if as many people would come to this funeral as came some time ago to my friend Morris funeral. And this afternoon, even as I stand here to present, God watch at me as if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Suzanne, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, all right. Okay, no worries. All right, good. <laughs> Myself and Susan has, uh, we have this private joke among us. She says when I'm preaching God, I just throw words at her. So we have this private joke. I try my best not to do that this afternoon. Uh, but all that, all that I do, Susan, when I'm presenting, I never ask you to get married. I don't ask you to become a millionaire. All that I do is ask you to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's all that I do. That's all that I do. Uh, this afternoon, I did not know Kendra. I saw her, but uh, I don't know her. Uh, but based on the eulogy and based on what transpired here this afternoon, I know that she was well loved uh, by her relatives, her mom, her siblings, and the list goes on. Uh, but this afternoon, as I present, and I'm going to try to present for about 15 to 20 minutes and then stop. Sister Delmo, good afternoon. And Commissioner, good afternoon. Uh, as I present, I would like you to remember that a funeral service is for us to bear in mind that life is short. And for us, while we are alive, to make it right with God because there is no repentance in the grave. And so this afternoon, as I present, I am saying to somebody, whoever you are, before the sermon is closed, I'm saying to you, the most important thing on earth is not for us to continue living because we will all die. The most important thing on earth is for us to make it right with God while we are alive. Because we the living, we know that we shall die. But the dead knows nothing. Shall we pray? God and Father, thank you so much for your love towards us. Song about just now. Thanks for family members who can gather together, relatives and friends, and share in this moment of grief. Help us to remember that Jesus Christ wept at the graveside of Lazarus, showing that he has emotions. And help us to remember that Jesus Christ is still the resurrection and the life. Bless your people, I pray. And help us to hold on to you, whom to know is life eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. I read from Esther chapter 3. And in 
Esther chapter 3, I read two verses. Esther chapter 2, sorry. It says in Esther chapter 2 and verse 5, Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimea, the son of Kish, a Bethlehemite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And this is what I want you to listen to. And he, Mordecai, that is, brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, who Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. That's the verse I want you to remember. He brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Good is the reading of God's word. Who is your cousin? I'm just asking a question. Any of you have cousins in this congregation now? I'm just asking a question. And you don't want to answer me. Uh, well, uh, this evening, I want to focus just a little bit on your cousin. Uh, in the book of Esther, I notice uh, that Esther also called Hadassah has become queen. I notice, however, that she did not just become queen like that. Go back and study it. Uh, you, when you study it, you will notice uh, that the king Ahasuerus, he dethroned Vashti, you remember? Uh, I wonder if people read the Bibles today. Well, at least the older ones did. You remember Vashti or Vashti, whichever name you want to give her? She displeased Ahasuerus and he dethroned her. And then afterwards, he wanted another queen. Follow the story very short this afternoon. And in the story, I noticed that his counselors said to him, you need to get another queen, but the queen, the new queen, would have to be a virgin. Now, first stop in point. How would the king find a virgin? Well, uh, he has to send out escorts and individuals to search the land, and uh, most likely are uh, the medical officers of the day. Everything in the Bible, you know. Uh, the medical officers of the day uh, would do what they have to do uh, to discover if this lady uh, going to the palace who can become uh, the queen is a virgin. And here comes the decree from the king. And Mordecai, cousin of Esther, he did so well at taking care of his cousin uh, that uh, when the escorts and the soldiers and whoever were around 
lifting up those who are virgins, she qualified. Mordecai's cousin Esther qualified. I'm going someplace, follow me. Uh, how come she qualified? Well, she qualified uh, because uh, she was a virgin. She was not sexually active. But this is the point I want you to get. Esther was taken care of by your cousin. You have a cousin? You have a cousin in the congregation? Uh, no, uh, no, Mordecai is a refugee. You know. And Esther's parents are there. Kindred's uh, 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 baby is alive. And she has cousins. Y'all get what I'm saying? She has cousins. And come back to Esther's story. How is it Mordecai was so successful at taking care of Esther and that nobody troubled her and listened to the big one. Uh, Mordecai himself uh, uh, saw Esther as someone very uh, valuable and vulnerable. And this Mordecai uh, made sure uh, that he took care of her uh, so well, uh, protected her so well, that when the king Ahasuerus wanted a queen who had to be a virgin, Esther qualified. Question, who is going to take care of Kendra's, of Alice's baby? Pastor, it's Kenda, I'm Kenda. Kenda, okay. Mama. Mama. Mama, okay. Who is going to take care of Sweet Pea's baby? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No, no, y'all must answer that question. Yeah. You don't have to answer me because you'll give me an academic answer this afternoon. Yeah. So don't want your answer now. And, and, and listen to something. Uh, the best person to take care of her is her cousins. Susan, you come in too as grandmother. Uh, but uh, I'm hitting up cousins. Uh, because uh, they would be uh, the same generation of baby. Baby who? Them names, man. Right? So, so, so it's cousins. Now, this may not sound like a popular message this afternoon, but it is applicable and relevant. Let me tell you why it's applicable and relevant. And this part, Pastor George, this part of the sermon you can't preach. You're going to understand why. This part, you could preach better than me, I know that. But this part you can't preach. Many, many years ago, A lady by the name of Vida gave birth to a child. And she died in child's birth. Listen to me, if you don't listen, you will miss it. She died in child's birth. And that baby was taken care of by his cousins and his aunt. To the extent that he didn't get a chance to suck breast milk. Try him on day. He didn't get a chance. But here, yeah, the lady who took care of him was his blood relative. Blood relative, his aunt. And the others who took care of him were his cousins. He grew up and did not even know who was his mother up to about five years plus. Went to school. And when he went to school, uh, some of the children said, you know the lady who taking care of you? That's not your mother. Sylvina, your mother. Your mother is Vaira. That's what they told this boy. He got confused. So he went home and asked the person who he calls his mother, Sylvie. I don't, he, he never used to call her Sylvie. He said, Mommy, because that is the person he opened his eyes and saw. Well, you know what the lady said? 
What they said to you at school is true. I am not your mother. I am not your mother. Your mother named Vida and she died in childbirth. And since then, I am taking care of you, little boy. Blood relatives. Uh, listen, the boy grew up further. Uh, went to primary complete. Uh, went to secondary school complete. And his cousins were always on his case. Uh, looking out for him. But uh, he didn't even have much size. Small in stature. Not much size. And listen, uh, sometimes other individuals uh, want to take advantage of him. Uh, but his cousins, some of them tall of him. And they always taking care of him. And guess what? When that boy got to about 12 years old, his father uh, prepared him uh, in baptismal school. He and another child uh, called Marley uh, prepared them uh, for baptism. Uh, so by the time he was ready for secondary school, he knew the ways of the Lord. He had accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior uh, because he and one of his cousins got baptized. The story was what it didn't finish, Susan. The story didn't finish. And the boy became a pastor. A pastor well. And then afterwards, I migrated to Grenada and find people like Claude and Susan as brothers. And now today, he turned out to be such a good pastor because his cousins and blood relatives took care of him that today, Susan said, I know you're sure words to me, but you got to bury her. And of course, you know who you're talking about, his child. I'm that child. Now listen, someone almost done. Somebody said, uh, uh, we, we had them in the burial room and all, uh, buried till night time. Not this time. Not this time. We live in Egypt now. Uh, listen to this. Who is your cousin? Same question I ask. Watch. Watch. This world is filled with cousins. Go and trace it now. Go and trace it. Because Adam and Eve's blood run through our veins, and so Mama's baby, Sweet Pea's baby, can be taken care of very well by aunts, uncles, blood relatives, and the cousins to the extent that when she gets to adulthood, she can be an outstanding individual. Uh, we cannot bring back the dead. At least I cannot. Jesus can. Uh, but one thing I know, and that's a message I want to leave with us this afternoon. You are cousins to this baby. So you have to make sure that she has a good growing up and a successful life. I share two texts and then I sit down. That is enough sermon. Y'all won't remember the cousin's concept. Listen to this. Susan, as I noticed you put up your hand that you will take care of. A police girl, I noticed you said that. Listen to this instruction. Listen to this instruction. Do not. God help me to call baby name correct. Karina. Huh? Karina, but I'm not the same name you are. Karina. <laughs> <laughs> confusing me. <laughs> All right, good. Okay. I agree, I agree with you. But listen, listen to this. Do not dress up Karina and send her to Kitty's carnival. Will you ask the pastor to come? Yeah. Mordecai did not dress up Esther and send her, his cousin, to kill his son. For no! Because the text says 
train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. If you train the child from the time the child is small to dress up and wind up in King's Carnival, when the child gets older, that is what you have trained the child for. Don't do it. Don't do it. You got to train the child well. Mordecai didn't do that. He trained Esther in such a way as to accept the Lord as her Savior. And that is why when Esther had a difficult situation, you must go back and read the book, the book of Esther, and you will notice uh, that Esther has said, okay, I'm going to fast and pray uh, because our future is at stake as, uh, as, as members of the Jewish nation. And she said, my word uh, to Mordecai, we will fast and pray. Instead of dressing up, uh, Karina. Karina, and taking her to Kiddie's Carnival, dress her up and bring her to church. Bring her to church. That's where the blessing is. That's where the blessing is. This afternoon, I read Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. And then I start. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. This afternoon, baby Karina is who we have to focus on. And all of you just get free calm. <laughs> from Susan. I know you always get free to call. I know Susan is my sister. Right? You must every now and then find out how things go with baby Karina. Uh, listen, I had it good, you know. Trust me. Don't pity me. I had it good. God, my grandfather used to come. Nine of us in the world. Right? Two siblings before me. And my grandfather used to come and say, Charles, this is the one I'm taking with me for vacation sometimes for a week. I am a good. My grandfather, before he got to 12, that when the police say, I shouldn't say, but that's an analogy that they should tolerate me. Right? Now, listen, now my grandfather, before 12, he gave me a shotgun when it's not populated area, and he gave me two cartridges. 16 gauge shotgun. Go and shoot whatever you want to shoot. Anything that moves, boy, anything, monkey, anything, and shoot it. You know what that was doing to me? It was building my self esteem. Yeah. At least I had it good. But when I went to school in Georgetown, capital city, right? Because I grew up in a bush area. At least in my, my hairstyle wrong, my boots wrong. Uh, everything wrong, they call you boots die die all the time. It is those cousins at the school used to look out for me. Charles had anything to eat, they're always looking out for me. And that's why I'm asking the question this afternoon who is your cousin? This afternoon we have a cousin who is motherless. Don't go taking care of all kinds of people in Afghanistan and all about. You have your cousin right here. Take care of her. And remember I say, don't carry the child to King's Carnival. The child don't have to learn to whine. Everybody know to whine. Nobody don't have to teach anybody to whine. No, no. You didn't know that? That's right. Nobody has to teach anybody to whine. That's in us. At the right time, you know how to whine. I don't know why you, why you think you gotta go can you want to go to wine. A club? Oh, come on, man. We keep our wives and our husbands uh, because we go to wine. But we wine in, in, that, in that environment of secrecy. That's how it should be. That's the plain truth. They're sending them to kiddies' carnival for them to go to wine. 
And who could wine the best? No! Don't let the victory no go there. Finally, this afternoon, we have sadness, yes, but we have joy also. We have joy because a life has been brought into this world. Listen, God could have, God could have caused me to die, you know, and God could have caused baby to die. We, 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 we gotta we gotta stop blaming God. Listen, I thank God every day. I love myself. You, know? you look at me all the shot, man. I love myself. I don't wanna be tall. God has blessed me. You see, when you're doing God's will, He blesses you, He heals you, He gives you a, a purpose for getting up every day. And I am saying God has blessed the darkness community. Oh, yeah. uh, and also, and the community at large, with a baby who don't have a mother. And God put us, put us there. He watching us to see if we will be the Mordecai. Yeah. To God, baby Karina, like Mordecai, God in Esther. So that one day I might be old, I may not be able to do the way. I may be old, the older, they must be aged. All that drag him with a stick. One day, by the help of God, and we must pray. You know, don't just listen to someone pray. Pray for the child. Visit the child. Visit the parent. Uh, visit the cousins. Encourage them. And, 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 and by the way, I had other things, but the talk with uh, Also, uh, the child must learn from the time she could barely talk. She must learn to sing and also learn uh, to repeat. Passages of scripture are because thy word have I hid in my heart and that I might not sin against thee. A lot of things that happen to me are when decision making, uh, when I come to the spot where I have to make some technical decisions and uh, the word of God comes back to me. You know where I learned that from? I learned that since I'm a child. May God bless us as we remember to look out. For cousin Karina. As we have stand, I invite you now to bow your head reverently as we seek the Lord in prayer. And the rest of the congregation, you would remain with bow heads as we lift our petition before our Heavenly Father. Almighty Father, creator of this universe, how excellent is your name in all the earth and your ways past finding out. For thou art the Almighty and the perfection. And no one can search and can find you out. So we exalt your holy name this afternoon. We praise you, Lord, for your worthy to be praised. In a very special way, Lord, we stand before you asking for your compassion, for your grace, and for your strength. 
We present the Douglas family before you this evening for they are in a state of mourning. But we pray, dear Father, that you will come close to them, touch their heart, and help them to recognize that all is not lost because you are there right by their side. I pray, dear God, that you will comfort them, you will strengthen them, you will lead them in the path of righteousness, you will give them courage amid this trying hour so that by your grace they will stand secure in your arms. I pray, dear Father, that you will cover them, you will protect them, you will keep them safe in your arms and help them to recognize that with you all things are possible. I plead your blood and I ask, dear Father, that you will cover them, protect them from diseases, especially Karina, even as she would grow up, I pray dear God that you will protect her from the disease of childhood and you will keep her safe in your arms. So whatever come her way, dear Father, that you will protect, you will guide and you will deliver and present her clean before you. I pray dear God that you will strengthen each one and all those who would give counsels and advice to that little one I pray, dear Father, that they would do so according to your divine will. I pray that you, they would lead, them in the, lead her in the path of righteousness for an instant. That even though she would walk through the valley of the shadow of death, she will fear no evil. For that you will be her rod and her staff that you will comfort her. I pray, dear God, that you would bless everyone. Keep them in perfect peace. Let the mind be stayed on you. That even when the time of refreshing shall come from your presence, that even my dead, that little one, and the rest of the entire Douglas family would hear from your lips, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because you have been faithful over a few things, I would now grant you to be ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy love. Take charge, bless them, Keep them strong, keep them faithful, and that may be courageous. And may your Holy Spirit now take charge. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Just keep your seats for a moment longer. Just two more items and then we'll depart. So at this time, I call on my sister. To do the vote of tax. The Lord cannot give you more than you can bear. I want to say thank you, special thank you to my good friend and my cousin, Sean Wayne from our home, the pastor and members of the Paradise Sembles Church. The praise was powerful, he moved mountain, and is that what has me strong here today. To my family, my children, my grandchildren, my brothers and sisters, thank you very much. To my family abroad, the Douglas family and whatever family abroad, Susan said thank you again and a special thank you to the people of paradise. I love my people. I love my community. I will give them what I have. They will do anything for me. I had a third night, I don't make nothing, I didn't buy the onion. And everybody could have four and five times. Today, we have a birthday party. I don't buy a pork of rice yet. And I expect about 20 pot of food. All you eat. And thank you again. Thank you, especially my community people. And let us keep the community spirit going. Thank you very much and thank you everybody. Thank you. Sister Delma, don't mind us forget you, but you're still there in front. (laughs) 
So once again, we want to say thank you for coming out today to support the family. We are about to make our way to the graveside. And so this is the order that we will exit the building. The platform personnel will leave, followed by the casket, followed by the family, and then everybody else will follow. Again, the platform personnel will leave, followed by the casket, then the family, followed by everybody else. Our hymn of departure will be hymn 205, Glimpse of the Golden Order. And just before we take that hymn, we will close with prayer. Father, Lord, we ask that even as we go to the next phase of today's proceedings, that you continue to strengthen and comfort the family we pray. In Jesus' name.
Come on up. Right near to the right near to the Man over another one, man over another one. Man over another one.
Gotta give him a blank one. That's his other chop with the ball. Alright, let's pull out that side. I'm back in the air, please. Judge.
देखते क्या Okay, this is the front service, the Douglas. <coughs> They're not able to come to transport because we'd be in the house. I'm sorry for that. I don't know. I'm very sorry for that, okay? So, we are not standing right. I'm gonna get that right behind the house, so I'll get that right in front of the house. Victoria. What's up? 
And if you try to feel small, then you bring. If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain, is a place for people like you. If you stand up for those down on the knees, I lend a voice to those who cannot speak. If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who lost their way. There's a place for people like you.
You bind it, bind command, you bind command. You bind command. You bind command. You My soul, my Savior, called to thee. Oh, great all, oh, oh, great all. Oh. Then sing my soul, my Savior, called to thee. Oh, great all. Oh.
Okay, all the families of the DC, take a picture of all the family, please, all the family, take a picture of you all, please, don't leave.
So all the families, please assemble. Let me take a picture. All the families, please. All the families. All the families. All the families. All the families, please assemble around, please. Hey, come on. Yo. Hey. I'm not buying you, Albert. I'm not buying me. Okay. Watch. This, that's all the little children. Be up with them that step, please. Little children in front. Make a one-legged children, please. All the children run. From the, from, um, this brother, this. You let, let the child go in front, and all the children go in front of you, this. They go on to the children. All the children, they go back. All the children go back. You just go back and back. And make a stop, please. Are you ready there? Lady, you know, the one in black just go, what is it more? Right. Are you going to go? Are you going to go? Are you going to go? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Look at Okay, this is the end of the service. Thank you all for here. Is the funeral service is streamed by me, myself and Josco. Right, to stream by that this afternoon. So the YouTube one is going just cool. For, for the YouTube one, I will do the blood on Facebook. Okay, I will upload the video on YouTube later on for you to see it on my page on YouTube. Okay, so stand by. I'll upload it tonight when I go home to to do the donor on Facebook. We will get it on YouTube later on because I didn't have a next phone to go live on the YouTube channel. So that's the reason why. But still stand by. I'll upload the video later on. So may God bless you all and enjoy your evening and stay stay blessed. Um, Kimberly, I cannot really take you now because I put them alive right now. May God bless you and keep you through. And to all the Natalie and everybody here, Maril and Maran, Maran Chatman, everybody here on the live, stay strong, be strong, and keep blessed. You know, it's a sad moment for everyone to go through now, but I know that God is good. God is control everything that you do. Let God have his way. Let God have his way and let God be be in the middle of you all, be the blessed of you all. We hope to see her. What I did when Jesus come, we'll all see her again. So those on the live, please get your life straightened up and accept Christ to be a part of the kingdom of God that I'll give to you all today. Be strong, stay strong, and may God bless you all. Enjoy evening. May God bless you.